and third geolo geopolitical factor because of they have because they have vast territory they can uh, exert their uh, political power to Europe or Asian countries because they border this Eastern European countries um, and Eastern countries at the same time they they can you know uh, express their opinions about the things that are going on this worldwide and lastly they have very uh, strong military power which is sec just next second biggest power next to USA um, it, uh, even though Russia is now uh, has been uh, had been a down falling country down right down going or down falling country in the six uh, in the 70s or 80s they're now um, gaining more power to be powerful like yeah so when you actually have to when you want if you want to go into business in the future I hope you have to I think you're gonna have to uh, do a lot of business with these strong countries, especially Russia if you're Korean, because Korea now uh, borders not uh, physically, but North Korea actually borders with North Korea, and China actually um, is rising, but also Russia itself actually wants to exert more power on North Korea and South Korea at the same time and they are economically uh, re getting richer i think so for this for if you so for this reason i think if you're going to have to learn foreign languages by yourself i hope you can choose russian for yourself and your future and then when i about russian literature it's a good thing that russian borders all these european and eastern countries because they um Naturally, they kind of their literature itself, uh, Russian literature itself kind of mixed this Eastern factors or Western factors of all these countries in its literature. So when you're actually reading the War and Peace in uh, uh, War and Peace written by Tolstoy, you ha actually it was at first written in French, but then it also kind of has a factors of what's going in Siberia or this um, mm, the far east far eastern countries are doing so mm, even though you're a Korean I think you're gonna find something uh, different about Russian literature from all this European literature and the thing that I found out in Russian literature is that when you uh, like when Koreans say about their literature, they say we have some kind of feeling that is not uh, that is not common in any other European countries, which is called Han. It's Han means like sadness, also like sadness um, and this revenge or everything mixed together, especially common in Korean women. But that we like many of us thought that this kind of feeling is kind of hard to find in any other foreign literature but then we can see this a little bit common thing about Han feeling in Russian literature especially in Tolstoy's writer uh, writings like if you read Anna Karenina you can see that there's kind of Han in her feelings when you when she actually decides to suicide herself yeah so even though you're a Korean, I think you're gonna feel you're gonna be really uh, sympathetic, or like you're gonna feel this. You're gonna find so many common things that <laughs> common in Korea in Russian literature. And then, as I told you before, I I find they really beautiful to actually read Russian poems, especially because they have very beautiful literary pronunciations. Um, Actually, it's really hard to uh, learn Russian language, but then when you actually got, get used to it, it becomes really uh, joyful or interesting to read it even though you can't understand it. And that's what I think it get, uh, it's the interesting part of Russian liter literature and language. 
because when you actually read more and more you're gonna find the, find the meanings of that words in dictionaries or anything so that you're gonna be more uh, uh, you're gonna be more comfort comfortable in speaking or reading Russian Russian yeah so these are the two factors why I think you should major in Russian language and literature if you're considering it and that I'm going to talk about future jobs you can have when you major in Russian literature and language. Um, basically, you can be a correspondent go, go, living in Russia and telling this news about what's happening in Russia or economical, economic, political researcher of Russia, which means that right now I see many of people, many of companies here in Korea are doing many researches of Russia itself as I told you before there's a there will be a lot of business going on between Korea and Russia so if you major in Russian literature language like many companies will hire you as to to be the researchers of Russia and diplomat a lot of if you major in any foreign languages you can be a diplomat yourself and then interpreter or translator um, the, the thing that about Russian interpreter or translator is that many people in Korea now majored in English have kind of found their jobs as translator or interpreter that like so many people have majored in French, German, Spanish and in English that you might hard, you might find it hard to uh, find your own job as interpreter or translator if you major in those kind of languages but it's gonna be more easier for you to find your own job if you're gonna major in Russian and Russian itself is kinda really complicated when it uses thing about when Russian uh, when you actually speak Russian the thing that complicates many people speaking Russian is that they have a very small little different nuance that makes it really um, makes people misunderstood and then if you become really uh, if you become really versatile in Russian then you're gonna be um, you're gonna be useful for every <laughs> situation when uh, interpreter or translators are, are all needed and then professor of Russian literature or Russian language um, if you study keep if you keep studying you're gonna be professor in the future well that's for sure and other than these jobs I think if you major in Russian language and literature it's gonna be really good for you to major in different thing in graduate school because Mm, Korea right now needs a lot of uh, specialists about Russian politics, Russian economics, or Russian business thing that if you're gonna major in Russian language and literature in the university and then major in economics or politics then it's gonna be uh, a strong merit for you to be on Russian uh, parts so that you're gonna be really, uh, you're gonna be really successful in the in the future. Um, so I think you, if you're considering uh, majoring in any other foreign languages, I think you'd better uh, choose Russian for all these reasons. And this is the everything that I've prepared for this presentation. Thank you. Uh, yeah, this part you can see. This is uh, almost uh, Korea, Japan, China, Mongol, and all these European countries bordering Russia. And this is the uh, photo uh, taken in Moscow, the very uh, famous place uh, called Red Square. In Russian, it's called Krasnaya Ploshit, and it's uh, really um, famous. <laughs> I hope you can visit there someday. Yeah, thank you.